what can I say about John Carpenter's Halloween that hasn't already been said a million times before? Just being honest here, probably not much. However, I'm going to do my best to talk about it without boring you to tears by skipping the usual formalness of a movie review. The wind lightly blows. You hear the rustling of the fallen leaves of many colors, brown, orange, and red. There's a cool crispness in the air along with the great smell of burning leaves, pine straw, and trash. That last part sounds strange, but you know it's true, and you love it as much as I do, I'm sure. No doubt about it, it's October, one of the best times of the year. It's a time when you can't get enough candy corn, despite saying you hate it throughout most of the year. It's also a time when you and your family go to the fair, which I love, to pig out on all of that amazing fair food and take in all of the sights, sounds, and life-altering wonderful fair smells of the season. You pick out the best pumpkins for both making pies and carving the traditional jack-o'-lantern. You pick out your favorite scary costumes to wear for trick-or-treating and Halloween parties. You pop popcorn and put on your favorite horror movies to watch, never suspecting that you soon may become part of a real horror movie. As we all know, I'm now talking about the 31st of October, the night when the veil between the living and the dead is parted for one night only and someone or something is definitely lurking in neighborhoods. Perhaps your neighborhood, to be exact. He goes by many names, but the ones you may know him as are the Boogeyman and the Shape. Is he a man or is he something else altogether? I'm going with Dr. Loomis on this one. He isn't a man. He has the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. I was paraphrasing there, but I'm sure you all get the point. Babysitting in a middle class suburban neighborhood shouldn't mean a possible death sentence for you and your high school friends. But in this fictional small town of Haddonfield, Illinois, that's exactly what it means. Evil struck many years ago when a young Michael Myers picked up a butcher's knife and put a clown mask on and for no real reason at all murdered his own sister, Judith, just because. Now he's home once again in Haddonfield to kill, but this time on repeat. It seems he has his sights set on a particular target, but anyone else that insults him or gets in the way between him and his primary target will die. His target is Laurie Strode. She's just a sweet, intelligent high school girl enjoying life with her friends and babysitting. But as we all know by now, there's a secret that not even she knows yet about herself and the connection she has with Michael Myers. We find out in one of my favorite Halloween movies in the franchise, Halloween 2, that she is Michael's sister. But back to the original Halloween now, the one that started it all. John Carpenter, who is one of horror's greatest movie directors ever, does a masterful job here with Halloween by sucking you into the story immediately with an unforgettable opening credits, synth theme, and opening scene that really sets the mood for the entire movie. This film just screams the Halloween holiday throughout its entire runtime. It's spooky. It has all the what I like to call ugly, cute, but lovable 70s colors that we all associate with fall and Halloween. You start getting to know the main characters of Laurie, Annie, and Linda, along with young Tommy Doyle and later Lindsay Wallace, and you instantly like them and care about them. They seem like they would be a great group of teens to hang out with if you were in high school. They're just into having a good fun time, basically, and we all can relate to that. Deborah Hill deserves most, if not all, of the credit for making us like and relate to these girls. We don't want to see them die, but John Carpenter knows that and pulls the rug out from under us anyway. The shape doesn't care what you and I want or don't want to happen to this group of babysitting friends. To him, they all must die. Lori, because she is his primary target, and her friends Annie and Linda, along with Bob, because they pissed him off and got in his way. All of the cast do a great job in this film that just begs to be watched every Halloween night, which, along with watching the rest of the Halloween franchise, is my Halloween tradition every year. Jamie Lee Curtis as Lori Strode and Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis really knock it out of the park with their performances, and I think bring the movie up the most. Of course, I have to also mention Nick Castle for his eerily creepy performance as the shape himself, Michael Myers. Also, no one will ever forget the classic see anything you like line from Linda, 
played by the beautiful and talented PJ Souls. Michael Myers certainly never forgot Annie's Hey Jerk, Speed Kills line spoken by Nancy Loomis who plays Annie in the film. Halloween 1978 isn't perfect, but it's pretty darn close to being perfect. To us horror fans around the world, it's an all-time classic masterpiece and one of the greatest horror films ever made for sure. It took the best elements from Psycho and Black Christmas and added some spooky holiday magic along with a great synth score and many other things that just hit all the right notes. Thank you, John Carpenter, Deborah Hill, RIP, and everyone involved in the making of this epic holiday horror film. Just remember, the shape still lurks. So until next time, sleep kills. And no matter what, never fall asleep, horror fans. See you in the next video.